YouTube, what's going on today, man? Listen, welcome to the channel. My name's Ryan. In this video, I'm gonna go over something that I built for Comfy UI. It's called Control Freak. And what it does is allow you to take physical control of your Comfy UI workflows by way of any gamepad, any MIDI controller, your phone, and soon to be other things like OSC, et cetera, et cetera. Any parameter of any node in any workflow can be mapped to any button knob or axis on any controller of any kind. You can also map buttons to core comfy UI commands like the Q prompt button, and you'll see all of this in this video. The mappings can be stored in a workflow. So with something like a MIDI controller where it's pretty standardized, it's, it can be useful to share with other people that have MIDI controllers. If you want an example workflow with some mappings, please see the description for a, a workflow on, on Civitai. Also in the description, it's the GitHub of this project. If you want to, go give it a star. Also, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel because I drop heat like this all the time, dude. All right, without further ado, let's freaking freak out. Here we are in Comfy UI. Let's go through the Control Freak user interface. You can access that by clicking this button up here and you'll be presented with this main menu. This controllers tab shows you all of the controllers that you have connected to the computer. I've got a couple of virtual MIDI devices as well as this gamepad that I'll be using for this demonstration. The next tab, the mappings tab, will have nothing in it because I have no mappings. We're gonna go through that together and we'll come back and look at this later. The UI commands tab is where you can map uh, command, comfy UI commands like Q prompt to buttons on your device. The rest of the mappings are done on a per node level, like a workflow level. So this is why UI commands has its own special tab in this main menu. Now let's go over how you'll actually probably usually be mapping things, which is by finding the node you're interested in and right clicking on it. If you right click on like the background of the node, you'll see in the context menu, you have map control, and then you can select any of the widgets in the node and do either a standard or a quick map. Let's do, uh, let's do, let's do a quick map first. If you right click on a specific node, then you can go directly to quick map and you'll see it's now listening. Um, let's, okay. So I've mapped it to this Z axis of the controller there. And then let's do another one to the same axis, uh, quick map. And I'm going to go like this. Okay, see they're moving in unison now, but what would be fun is if they went in the opposite direction. So I'm going to click edit mapping here. Actually, no, I don't need to do that because I have an invert mapping button, which I will click. Okay, now you can see they go in opposite directions, so that should be fun. Next, let's try a standard mapping so you can see the full blown interface. Uh, let's do like wink, I guess. Standard map. Okay, so this is like the learning screen, and this is particularly useful for, for uh, mapping things and being able to s specify a minimum and maximum value. Like, if you take a uh, LoRa loader, I can't see it, let's see if that's it. Yeah, a LoRa loader, so the strength, the maximum strength of these LoRas is like 100 or something, which is wildly high. So if you map a, an axis to this, it's going to go between 100 and negative 100. It's just ridiculous. So it can be really useful to specify a minimum and maximum value that overrides that of the widget. When you're in the learning screen, you just interact with the controller and you can see all the different buttons. I'm going to choose this button here, button six. And once you've selected that, you can then select a mapping type toggle will switch between the minimum and maximum value. Momentary, it will be maximum when held, minimum when depressed. Increment will go up by a value, decrement will go down by a value, and then trigger action is reserved for the UI command mappings like Q prompt. Let's go ahead and do momentary. And we can leave the minimum and maximum zero and 25, and then click map control. Now, as you can see, wink is when I'm holding it, it's at the maximum of 25. And when I let it go, it's back to zero. Okay, let's do another button mapping. Standard map. Okay. And let's do increment and have it go up by any, any value here. Let's do three. Okay, as you can see, it's going up. But now I might want to go back down. So what we can do 
is add another one because any any button can be mapped to any control and any control can be at, mapped to any number of buttons and then decrement and let's do like a value of two did i get the right button yeah i did okay sweet finally let's map a ui command i'm gonna map the trigger for fun Sweet. And while we're here, let's look at the mappings. So you can see all of the mappings that we just mapped. This is both at the workflow level and also, um, well, actually, let's let's go back here for a second. Uh, from here, you can edit these mappings and change the minimum and maximum value and the mapping type. You can also edit them by right clicking and going to edit map here. There's also a quick unmap, you know, tried to make it as convenient as possible. So let's, uh, let's actually get, uh, this will be funny. Let's go. All right, sweet. So now we've got, I don't know, let's go, let's do this axis here. Okay. So now we can make Harold just do whatever we want. All right. Nice. I like this one. I like that. All right, sweet. So that's basically it. You can map any button of any control to any widget of any node in any workflow, save them, share them, do all sorts of stuff. This is a funny example, but there are actually probably some pretty serious use cases for this. I'd love to hear in the comments, maybe some ideas. Let's cut to editing Ryan for, uh, for an outro. Editing Ryan here, uh, here to close out the video for the, for the other Ryan. Um, I don't know. You should take anything he says with a grain of salt. The man can't really be trusted. Not, not at least on a deep level. Uh, me, however, you can trust. And uh, trust me when I say you're going to want to subscribe to this channel. And thank you for watching. I'm still Ryan. Bye-bye.